Hello, 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 everybody. Everybody seems to be going crazy over this balloon dog that I did. It's an absolutely fun project. It's easy that even beginners, people just learning how to crochet can do this project. I did this particular one in Karen Anniversary Cakes just because I wanted to see how it turned out in thicker, bulkier yarn and turned out magnificent. And if you love this so much, you can actually sew some of these pieces together to make it stay. But let me just show you something real quick. You think you can't do this? You can, you can, you can. This is one of the more fun projects that I have done. I cannot say I created this because I absolutely did not. I got a free pattern off the internet. It was free. Didn't even pay a penny for it. It was just there for your wanting to do. But this is what this looks like. Looks like one of those balloons at the clowns make and then they turned it into an animal so I will put this back together at the end of this video this video is going to seem a little odd because I'm not going to do the whole project but I'm going to step by step tell you how to do this it's it's truly not hard I promise now for materials you will need a darning needle absolutely needed. Um, I didn't do mine till the end of the project, so it's your choice what you want to do. You will definitely need some polyfill because each time you do a, a section on this, you need to fill it. Now, I chose to fill mine soft. I did not stuff them to their super stiff, which you can. It's really okay. You can do it any way you want, but you definitely need polyfill. I have a huge stock of it so I don't seem to ever run out. You need to use the yarn that you're, you're liking, whatever you want to. You absolutely, because I am showing you how to do this in rounds. Because if you look, there's no lining definition of where I started and where I ended. I've seen it where they're just doing rounds and and finishing off each round doesn't turn out as pretty. This is no definition, which is perfect. Now, for your hook, for your yarn, for the one that I did, that was super bulky yarn, and it actually recommended, uh, did I always have it? This isn't the hook, but it recommended, here it is. My Karen yarn recommended an eight millimeter hook, so that's exactly what I used. So use whatever you want. But you do need to keep your stitches on the tighter side for this project. Okay. So. You will also need a pair of scissors. And I wrote down there are. Let me see here. There are. 194 rows in this pattern, which sounds like a ridiculously large amount, but it's really not because you have to do the tail. You have to do two sets of legs. So two and two, that's four legs. You gotta do the body. You gotta do the neck. You gotta do the ears, that's two. So the whole project turns out to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, three, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten, I think. 10, 10 bulbs, okay? So, I'm gonna get started with you. I'm sorry, my dog seemed to be in a very large barking mood today and I'm just not particularly loving it, but it's my dogs. We all have our tough days. So this project, I am going to strongly, very strongly recommend you do the magic ring. If you cannot do the magic ring, I'm going to recommend you chain three, you slip it into the first chain, and you work out of that circle. But the magic ring is the best option for this project. I'm just going to strongly recommend it. 
And if you're on our Facebook group and you really need, I can come on live and I can work with you to learn how to do the magic ring. It's, I will help anybody that needs it. Okay. So magic ring first. And, and then in the magic ring, you always chain one to hold it. Now this chain one is not going to be counted as a stitch or anything at all. So I want you to put in six single crochets. Now what I'm doing after I put in my second one, I'm already taking my stitch marker and marking my first stitch. Now if you can read your stitches without any issues, please do what's best for you. I know me. I need it. It's just how I work. So that's two. There's three, four, five, and here's six. Now, I do not want you to close your circle. Do not close it yet. I will tell you when it gets closed, but do not close it right now, okay? So now, for rows, this don't count as a row. It's just your starting row, so it's not even row one, it's row zero. For rows one, two, three, and four, you're gonna match stitch for stitch, so six single crochets. Then you do six single crochets again, and two more times, okay? So, here's my stitch marker. I put my hook, if I can get it in there. I take my stitch marker out, set it right down there. Now I put, this is one. So what I do, I re-put in there and let me know where I'm at. Okay, that's one, two, three, I'm sorry. four, five, and six. Okay, so that's one. And I write everything down when I'm doing this, otherwise I am, I just get lost. It's gonna start bowling up, don't worry about that yet. Okay, so then put my hook in there. You still didn't cinch it closed, remember? So that's one. And I'm gonna mark it again. Okay. Do not rush on this part, it takes time. This is two, there's three, there's four, five, And six, so I mark it. All right. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull it. I'm gonna turn this right side out where it should be. So now I'm going to do next one. I stitch my crochet hook in there. There we go. This is one. Let's 
just two. Three. Four. Five. And six. I mark it again. Now we're going to do one more of six. I promise you, this is the hardest part of the whole project. I've never lied to you guys that I'm not about to. So, one more. So, this is one. This is two. This is three. Four. Five. And six. Okay. Now, I'm going to pull that tight. Now I'm going to go down here. Now it's time to pull that bottom closed. And you can sew this around now, but I recommend at the end of the project because you can wrap weaving your ends around this side makes it a lot nicer. Okay? But you do what is right for you. But this, my friends, is the beginning of your tail. This does not get stuffed at all. So the next row, row five, we're going to increase Increases in two single crochets in every stitch, which means you will end up with 12. Okay, so Put your hook in there. Now what I do is I do two first. This is one And this is two And then I put My stitch marker right back in there and the first one I did two so on the first one Okay, so two in every stitch, so that's two, this is three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Okay? Trust me, it may not look right, but it is right. Okay. I apologize if it seems like a cut. My house went crazy for a little while, got company for a minute, the dogs were barking, crazy, crazy zoo. So anyway, so where we're at is I did my rows one through four, six single crochets. Then row five was increased to 12. So every bulb, when it says increase, it's two single crochets, this whole project single crochets, two single crochets in every stitch. Okay, so we did that. So row six is called increase again. So what you'll do is you will do two single crochets in every one. I know this goes against every pattern you've seen on how to increase row to row to row. This is, it works, trust me. So put my crochet hook back in there and now I'm gonna put two single crochets and that stitch one and two and notice I'm never joining at the end of each row we're just doing rounds that way you cannot see where you end or where you begin so that's two this is 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. Okay? Now, we're going to do rows 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Match single crochet to single crochet. So you're going to do all those rows, just keeping it at 24. So again, it would be 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So it's actually 10 rows. 10 rows of just... You keep it at 24. I'm going to do that, and I will be back here in a minute. Okay. I have returned. I did rows 7 through 16, matching stitch to stitch. Now, this is what it should look like. Now, if you use thicker yarn and a bigger hook, then obviously yours will be bigger. But now, this is the tail. This does not get stuffed. This is the bulky part of it. Isn't that cute? Isn't that cute? Isn't that cute? Okay, now, row 17 is called a decrease row. So, just like when we did increases 6 to 12, 12 to 24, Decreasing. Let me show you. I'm going to bring you in close. Now this is going to be decreasing from 24 stitches to 12. So you take your hook, you put it in your first stitch, and you grab yarn and come back out. And you have two. Then you go in your very next stitch. You go in there, you grab yarn, and you come on back out. Now you have three loops. You wrap and you go through all three. Now, before I go any further, I am going to mark that as my first stitch. All right, now we're done. Do it again. Let me bring it in closer so maybe you can see a little more. So you take your hook, you go into the next available stitch, you grab some yarn and come on back. You do that again. Grab some yarn, the next stitch, and come on back. You'll have three loops. You wrap your hook and you go through all three. That's it. That's decreasing every stitch. So it's in, in the next one, three, and you go over. Okay, so that's one, two, three. That's stitch four. Six, seven, eight. Nine. 
nine. Ten. Eleven. And that'll be twelve. There's your decrease to 12. Now on every segment you do, whether it's legs, body, neck, whatever you're doing, this is where you stuff. Stuff when you're down to 12 stitches. If you try to wait till you're six, it's gonna be a mess. So this is where you need to make your decision if you're gonna stuff it on the stiffer side or if you're gonna stuff it on the softer side. It is totally a preference, personal preference. But when you stuff it, make sure the stuffing is not going to get caught into your stitches. That's all I'm asking. Okay. There we go. All right. Now, after you have decided to stuff it to where you want, put your hook back on. Now, we're going to go down to 6. Decrease again from 12 to 6. So, we're going to be doing the exact same thing that we did to get from 24 to 12. Now, we're going to do from tw uh, 12 to 6. So, you go in your first, grab your yarn. Go in your next one, grab your yarn, and go through. There we go. And then I choose. If you want to count and not use the stitch markers, that's your choice. It's just a suggestion. So that's one. Two. Three, four, five, and there's six. Now when you're done each segment, it's going to ask you, the pattern itself is going to have you do these little, I'm hitting everything. It's going to have you doing these little segments so you have room to join them like a balloon. Okay. These are six stitches each in each row. And you'll be doing 19 to four rows. So four rows. 19 through 22, all you're going to do is single crochet in each stitch. Okay, so if I put my stitch in there, well, I'll take it out because I know where it's at, but. All right. So this is one. And six. Then I'm gonna do it again. I'm just gonna count because I don't, but you do what's right for you, okay? 
So this is one. Two. Three. Four. This is one, two, three, four. Okay, now I'm going to go over numbers with you and the way this goes because you, now that you've seen how to do one, you got this. Okay, so the next section we're going to do with the bulbs is the legs. So you're going to need to do this pattern that I give you two times. It's going to be the back legs. Okay, not four times right now, twice. Okay. So what you'll do is row 23, you'll increase to 12. So you'll put two in each one and make it 12, okay? Then for row 24, you're going to increase again from 12 to 24, okay? It's row 24, but you'll increase to 24, okay? Just like down here. Then for rows 25 through 38, so the tail was 10, but it's 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38. So this time it's 14 rows that you do of stitch to stitch of 24. Okay? So that's rows 25 to 38. After you're done 38, then you're going to decrease, like I showed you, from 24 to 12. That's row 39. After you decrease to 12, then again, that's when you stop and you fill it with your filling to where you're comfortable. Okay? This is the time you have to fill them. You can't fill them at the end of the project. After you fill it, then I need you to decrease again, which is row 40, from 12 to 6. Okay? Once you get to 6, Once you get to six, then you're going to do four rows of the single crochet like this. Six stitch to stitch, six. So rows 41 to 40, 41 to 44 will be matching stitch to stitch. So it's six, 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 and six. Okay. So then that's what you did. Then you need to repeat that same pattern again for the second leg. So you're at six. So you would increase to 12. Then you would increase to 24. Then you would do those rows, 14 rows, of stitch to stitch of 24. Okay? After you do that, then you decrease to 12. Next row is 12. You decrease from 24 to 12. Then you stuff your second leg. After you stuff your second leg, then you decrease to six. Then you do four more rows of single crochet, stitch to stitch of six. After you do that, you will be at row, you will finish row 65, uh, 66. 
Now 67, you'll be starting the body, okay? The body is the same. Every row is the same, increases and decreases. So 67, you'll go from 6 to 12. Row 68, you'll go from 12 to 24. Everybody good so far? After you're at the 24, you'll row 69 to 78. It'll be stitch to six, stitch to stitch, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 10 rows of matching stitch to stitch of 24, okay? On row 79, you will decrease to 12, okay? Once you decrease to 12, stop. Stuff the body. Okay? Stuff it. Keep them all the same. Okay? After you stuff it, then you decrease again to 6, which will be row 80. 80. 80. Okay? Then you'll do your four rows of single crochet. 6 each row. 81, 82, 83, 84. Then you're done your body. Then guess what? You go back over and do the legs that I already explained to you two more times. Okay, so if you pause this video and go back to the legs, do the legs again, but make sure you do it two more times. Okay? So you do two more legs then. After you've done all that and you did your stuffing and you did your six, then you're on the neck. Okay? Then you're on the neck. So you take it, you take your six, which will be row 129. Hope everybody's following so far. Row 20, 129, you will increase from six to 12. After you increase six to 12, row 30, you increase again from 12 to 24. So rows 131 to 138. So it's 131, 132, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38. Eight rows. You match stitch to stitch. 24. Okay? Row 139, you decrease back down to 12. Then you stop. And you stuff it to your degree, to your firmness or fluffiness. After you fill it for row 140, you decrease again back down to 6. Okay, see how easy this is? After you decrease to six, then you do your four rows of your bending point, your interlocking point of six. So rows 141 to 144 is matching stitch to stitch, six each row, okay? After you do that, now it's the ears. Ears are row 145. You increase to 12. After you increase to 12, row 146, you increase to 24. After you increase to 24, you do rows 146, one, sorry, 147 to 156, it's matching stitch to stitch 24. Four stitches. 147 to 156 should be 10 rows. After you do that, row 157 is decreasing back to 12. And guess what you do again? You stuff it. Stuff it to your firmness. Row 158. You decrease to 6. Then you do 4 more rows. 159 to 162 of six stitches per row. That'll take you to row 162. Then back me up on this video and do an ear again. Exact same thing. Exact same thing. You need a second one of repeat. Two ears. Okay? After you get done that, then you'll be on the head. Now you need to listen to me very carefully. 181, increase it to 12. 
182, you increase it to 24. Rows 183 to 190, you match stitch to stitch. So it's 183, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90. Eight rows of 24 stitches each row. Row 191, you decrease to 12. And then you stuff. Okay? After you stuff it, then you decrease 192 to 6. Now listen carefully. Row nine, 193. 193. You do one more row of 6 stitches. Just one row, please. Okay, and then your final row, 194, you increase to 12. And when you increase to 12, this is what it's going to look like, okay? This is your 12. This is your last part. So then, after you do your 12, you leave a nice long tail. And in this part here, right here, Weave in your end, right in this part. You can't even see that I weaved it in here. But I weaved it in, I went around a couple times. I didn't go back and forth, I just went around and around, okay? And you can't even see it, and it will not come loose, okay? So, let's do this. Did your tail. Then you did two legs. These two are exactly the same, okay? Then you did a body. Right here's your body. Then you did two legs again. Then you did your neck. Then you did your two ears. And then you did the head. Okay. Pretty cool, huh? It was all the same. Increase, decrease, increase, decrease, stuff. All that good stuff. So, after you've done all that and you weaved in your two ends, which this project only has two ends. So, I want you to start with this piece right here. The, the head. Okay. Take your head. Now you take your two ears here, wrap it over, okay? Then you take this and you push it down in between these two. And there's your head and your ears, okay? So then you leave this puff there, you take those two, use your legs, you wrap it over, okay? And then you take the rest of it and pull it through. Okay. There's that. And then you put the back two legs together. You wrap it over. See it? And you wrap it and bring it through. And look at that. There is your doggy. Ruff, ruff. And if you want to keep them this way, you can attach. You can attach. You can take some, some thread and attach them so he stands perfectly. But believe it or not, I angled him a couple times and he stood. Not the greatest, but he stood. But there it is, ladies and gentlemen. This is your tutorial for this balloon dog. This has been... I know this is not the word, a word, goodest, most favorite video I think I've done up to date. So please take your time, enjoy this tutorial. If you have any questions, come find us on Facebook, join our group and ask if you need me to do any live videos, if you need me to redo a tutorial, if you want to see something that you just don't know how to do, please come find us and we'll be happy to help you. My name is Ronnie. I work with Maggie and Lauren with Whip and Chain. If this video was helpful to you and you enjoyed it, can you please hit that subscribe button at the bottom and also hit that bell 
and the like button. Let us know how we're doing. If there's anything we could show you, please come find us and let us know. Till next time, happy crocheting, everybody. Bye.